There are already several dozen examples of retail and homemade Steadicams on YouTube, so why flood the internet with another? What I noticed while doing research for my build was that most all of them had a single feature that I liked, but few incorporated more than one. Anyone that knows me will tell you that I lean somewhat on the frugal side. All right, fine. They'll probably tell you that I'm obsessively stingy. Anyway, so the goal for me was to incorporate as many of my favorite features as the laws of physics and economics would allow. Basically, what this left me with was my imagination and whatever was lying around the house. I like the gyroscopic concept, but even some of the retail gimbals made noise, and because of the small diameter between camera and counterweight, they didn't look like they would do well with the heavier weight of a prosumer unit. For anyone still desiring a C-frame gimbal unit, consider hanging the unit from the handle. My logic for this idea is actually stolen from the manufacturers of soda turntables. Simply put, let gravity work for you, not against you. Several demo videos caused me a certain level of motion sickness as the horizon line swayed continuously from port to starboard. Many demos I watched showed the constant introduction of a second hand to change camera direction. I'm thinking no matter how careful you are, especially with light units, every time you touch and release you are going to introduce unwanted motion. Some of my other pet peeves are units that work well for one model or size camera and not another. Units that are only good for one height level. Units that are made out of materials that rust. Or units that make noise that can be picked up by the camera. And oh my goodness, please, no vests. Honestly, one of my favorite low-tech to dollar units is the Maricam. If I had a whole spare tripod lying around, I would have based mine off of his model with only a few modifications. Kudos to Sundog Pictures. Well, what I came up with didn't even meet all my functional requirements, but it did meet my economic ones. The base structure for my unit was an old camera tripod. Unfortunately for this project, I had already stolen the head for another project, one that I'll demonstrate in another video segment, and one of the legs had also been removed. This will not be a step-by-step -step tutorial as I scrounged parts that I had available. Just watch and let your creative juices flow, then look around for what you have. Arguably, the main part of any Steadicam is the counterbalance. These pieces were lying around my garage and fit perfectly over the leg. I found the R-pin in a parts bin. The tripod leg gives the benefit of being able to adjust the amount of stability without adding weight. For light cameras, the leg can be fully collapsed. In the fully extended position, not only do you have increased stability, but the modified foot I found allows me to use the unit as a fully adjustable monopod with pivot. Most of the bar type steady cams didn't provide provision for the cool gyroscopic effect beyond what the human wrist could provide. So I took the tripod center column and slipped it over the leg. A piece of pipe insulation fit perfectly over that to make it comfy soft. As well, I'm not holding on to a metal surface on those chilly days. As I mentioned before, I had to create my own head. No engineering magic there, just a matter of finding all the parts I needed. I put a level on the head because I thought it would be cool, but to be honest, enabling the horizon line on your camera or simply using the upper and lower edges of your view screen against a known horizon line and remembering to pay attention to it yields the best results. A Velcro loop may come in useful to keep your headphone, fire wire, or microphone wires out of the shot. The control arm was installed to give full control of yaw and to eliminate unwanted motion from making and breaking contact with the second hand. To use, just lightly grasp it with your forefinger and thumb. Of course, you have the freedom to let it dangle to the side. By extending the control arm, you can also use the unit horizontally for those pet level shots. I'm fairly satisfied with the versatility of motion. Pitch being the most difficult though, because you need to overcome the effects of the counterweight. But with the unit collapsed and with the control arm, it's fairly reasonable. As roll is the motion that makes me seasick, I've yet found the need to employ it. Yaw, which gives that cool detached floating effect, is effortless with the collar and control arm. I'm sure there are some properties that I forgot to cover, but why insult your intelligence with covering every boring detail? I'm also not going to waste your time with before and after shots because we all know that anything helps, nothing will remove everything, and all will require practice. Well, the video's over. Go get to work.